Welcome to the Chapter 10, Part 5 screencast for liquids and solids. Let's continue with an example that integrates some thermochemistry concepts that we've seen before and some phase change concepts that are now uh, being discussed in this unit. So we have some thermochemical data for sodium, its melting and boiling points, and the delta H of fusion and delta H of vaporization values. So the amount of energy needed to melt the substance and the amount of energy needed to boil the substance to take the liquid and turn it into a gas. And we have two parts to this question, amount of heat required to melt a certain amount of solid sodium and amount, or the enthalpy change when a certain amount of sodium vapor condenses. And let's take these one at a time. First of all, how much heat's required to melt 58.3 grams of solid sodium. And since we're dealing with melting, the melting point would be uh, important if that uh, comes into play if we need that temperature, uh, not the boiling point. And then the delta H of fusion is going to matter, not the delta H of vaporization. And again, remember, delta H of fusion indicates how much energy is needed, 2.64 kilojoules, to melt, that's fusion, uh, to melt one mole of sodium. And this is a fairly straightforward uh, conversion from one set of units to another. We start with the 58.3 grams of sodium and of course convert grams to moles because our delta H of fusion is in kilojoules per mole so we're going to need how many moles of sodium we have. And then since each mole of sodium takes in or requires 2.64 kilojoules in order for it to melt so that's a positive sign on the uh, delta H value because we're dealing with melting and energy is needed and that converts from moles into kilojoules. And then we simply do the calculation and we get plus 6.69 kilojoules. And what that means is 6.69 kilojoules of energy is needed to melt 58.3 grams of solid sodium. Now the second part of the problem, what's the enthalpy change when 27.4 grams of sodium vapor condenses? So now condensation is the opposite of boiling. Uh, liquid to gas is, uh, is boiling as the phase change. Gas to liquid is condensation as a phase change. So if we needed a temperature, we'd use boiling temperature. And if we need a delta H value, we'll use delta H of vaporization. And note that since energy is required to make a substance boil, then energy is given off when a substance condenses. And so we'd expect to get a negative value for our enthalpy change for this process. And it's pretty much the same as the one before. 27.4 grams of Na convert to moles, pretty straightforward. And then one mole of sodium gives off 89.6 kilojoules of energy or heat when this uh, process takes place. So we put a negative sign on that to indicate that energy is given off. And then when we do this calculation, we get negative 107 kilojoules. So we'd say 107 kilojoules of energy is given off when 27.4 grams of sodium vapor condenses. Now we can take this uh, type of thermochemical calculation dealing with phase changes and apply this to something we've seen a while ago in thermochemistry, heating curves. And uh, now we can do calculations for kind of all aspects of a heating curve. And we have two basic equations that are involved. If we have no phase change, then Q equals MC delta T. This should seem familiar from a while back. Heat uh, taken in or given off depends upon the mass of substance, the specific heat of substance, and its temperature change. And now we can also tie in what's going on when we have a phase change and the amount of heat taken in or given off is going to be proportional to the appropriate enthalpy change uh, for whatever phase change we're dealing with. And that's going to be times the number of moles of substance. So that's our uh, proportionality aspect. So here is a heating curve. Um, this is for water. And notice what we're doing is we're graphing heat added on the x-axis versus the temperature on the y-axis. And if we start with water as a solid, i.e. ice, at negative 25 degrees Celsius, 
we have to add some heat to make it, first of all, increase its temperature gradually to zero degrees. And then once it hits zero degrees, ice will now start melting and it will turn into a liquid and the temperature remains constant. So we have a constant temperature at zero degrees, even though more heat's being added. Eventually, all of the ice has turned into liquid. And now as we keep eating, adding heat, the temperature of the water increases. Eventually we hit 100 degrees Celsius at which water starts boiling. Temperature stays constant while the water boils, even though more heat is added. And then eventually all of the water liquid has turned into steam or water vapor. And now we keep adding heat and the temperature of the vapor goes up. Um, notice from the quantities of heat added, it doesn't take too much energy to increase the temperature of ice takes quite a bit of energy to melt the ice. Um, the slope here is reasonably steep, so it doesn't, I mean, it takes a reasonable amount of water, sorry, a reasonable amount of heat to increase the temperature of water compared to other substances, but it's nowhere near the amount of energy needed to change the phase from liquid to gas. So notice how much heat's added here. And then again, once you've changed it into a gas, doesn't take too much heat to change the temperature, relatively speaking. So let's just do one practice example of these sorts of calculations. So example 14 is a heating curve for sodium. We'll start at room temperature. We have some data from the previous example um, and the molar heat capacity of uh, sodium, which is uh, assumed to be the same for all phases, is also given here. And previous information are the melting and boiling points of, um, of sodium, as well as its delta H effusion and delta H vaporization. So here's all the information kind of compressed up at the top. And now we'll make a heating curve. And notice that we will start at room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. And since sodium's melting point is almost 100 degrees Celsius, it starts as a solid. If we add heat, the temperature will rise until we hit 97.8 degrees Celsius. And the substance is a solid during this whole time. So the amount of heat added will be Q equals, and now here instead of MC delta T, we'll use NC delta T. And the only reason we're doing this is because the uh, specific heat was given in joules per Kelvin mole rather than joules per Kelvin gram. So we're going to just say, let's say, let's assume we have one mole of um, sodium times 28.2 joules per Kelvin mole times a temperature change of 72.8 degrees uh, Celsius or 72.8 Kelvin as it goes from 25 degrees to 70 to 97.8 degrees Celsius. And that works out to be a little over 2000 joules. Okay, now we're at 97.8 degrees Celsius. The solid starts to turn into a liquid. We continue adding heat while the solid melts and the Enthalpy change for that process is going to be given by Q equals N times delta H, and both of these are for fusion. Remember, we're dealing with one mole, and the enthalpy change uh, for fusion for sodium is 2.64 kilojoules per mole, which is 2,640 joules per mole, and so 2,640 joules for the phase change, just keeping everything in the same units. Now, once all of the sodium has melted, as we keep adding heat, the temperature of the liquid sodium will increase and it'll keep increasing until we hit 883 uh, degrees Celsius. So notice our graph uh, is not exactly the scale here. And the Q for that is the same idea as the Q for the solid, but a much bigger temperature change. And in many substances, the specific heat will be different for the liquid phase than for the solid. But here we're um, given that it's the same for both. So that works out to be 22,000 and something uh, joules. And then um, if we keep on going, once we hit 883 degrees Celsius, then the liquid will boil and the heat of vaporization 
will be the number of moles times the delta H of vaporization, which is one mole times 89.6 kilojoules per mole, which is 89,600 joules per mole, and that works out to be 89,000 joules. And we could uh, then keep going, add more heat, and increase the temperature of um, vapor, sod sodium vapor. Um, but basically, here are the amounts of energy required for each step. And if we wanted the total, we could, of course, just add all that up. So that's it for this screencast.